The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It feels like life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. My life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. This is true. Oh, it's better, it's better with two. My life. Oh, it's better with you. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. Travis. Yeah. Yeah, this is Griffin McElroy. This one's gri- This one's got Griffin on it. This one does have Griffin in the mix, putting a little bit of sauce on it. And um, yeah, welcome, <laughs> welcome, guys. Hey, guys. Are you going to ask me about, because I did it different? No, we're not. Po- pointedly, we're not doing well because I I was thinking about what's fancy. Thank you for asking. I was thinking about what's fancy, and I think yeah. I was doing too much, and that's not fancy. And you know what's fancy? Like a, a one name name. You know, that's cool. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like Cher, point, or Madonna, or Kesha. Yes, a lot of people when they think about fancy, they mm-hmm. think about aristocratic. Like, pass pass me my right my my very thin toast. Right. I fancy, but f- my main exposure to fancy people has been at like a bar, but they're uh-huh. wearing like a business suit. Yeah, and they're like, "Why don't you get out of here, kid?" <laughs> Do you know what just I'm- like that, huh? Yeah, like who want oh, this stinky kid in here? Yeah, to- and but they'll be like the only fancy person in there, and yeah. I'll walk up and I'll be like to the bartender, be like, "Can I get a a." drink and then the guy will be like oh, uh, are you sure about that kid and wait like, is this the what? bartender speaking to you or a businessman at the no counter? it's the businessman sitting at the counter and he's got like fucking 20 babes all oh wow like, well that's always. probably why he wants you to get away because he needs those stools for his babes yeah, I, I, whenever I walk up We're to We're waiting bar, for a big table, kid. We didn't make a reservation for my birthday. We forgot to. I was supposed to, but then I got too busy being rich. It's my 15th birthday, kid. I'm so excited to eat here at Applebee's. That's my plane. That right, I crashed it into the Applebee's. Because I was so excited for the Jack Daniels burger. I'm very hurt, but I'm eating good in the neighborhood, kid. My voice box is damaged. (laughs) That's why I sound like this. He sucks, and he sucks the atmosphere, the joy out of the Applebee's room that I'm in. But fuck, he looks cool. He That's looks cool. so cool. And does That's he have cool. one name? Is that related to this in any way? He doesn't have any name. Oh, wow. That's how he forgot he... it in the crash? <laughs> he forgot it in the crash. He refers to himself as plain. Because I yeah. think maybe like that's the only word he could remember because his head got so fucked up in the crash. Yeah. Um, but These 20 babes are all paramedics. Yeah, then they're doing a surgery on me. But I can be awake and eat my Jack Daniels burger while they do it. Oh, fuck. I see my grandpa. Bye, kid. <laughs> He's been dead for 10 years, in case that wasn't clear in this audio format. I hate this bully. This 15-year-old rich <laughs> This 15-year-old fancy dying, bully. Who's dying in the Applebee's. How'd he get so rich? I don't know. Is don't he even know. rich? Is there actually a plane outside? We don't know. We don't know. That's the thing. That's how they get you the fancy. Anyway, that's the fancy I think of. And it makes me worried that maybe this isn't a good year theme because I don't want to turn into that. No, no. no. Whoa. 
That scared the ever living shit out of me. We got a Blart watch. Oh my god! Now, if this is okay, if this is what I think it is, this is our segment Blart Watch, where we keep you updated on literally every scrap of information about a possible third Paul Blart movie. Yeah. Sometimes, and, sometimes news only covers big moves. We cover even like the, the involuntary smallest. twitches. The and this inklings. has been this has been a segment that we've had for years. Yeah. This is just the first, <laughs> this, this segment has been ongoing for years. <laughs> We've been this doing it the, the last first, five years. Yeah. 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 This has been an ongoing segment. Uh, Paul Blart, Mall Cop 3. Everyone, literally every single human, babies come out of the womb. First word. Blart 3? Like everybody's asking about it. Um, And uh, Kevin James, Mr. Kevin, Dr. Kevin James, did a story, uh, the interview, I guess you'd say, that turned into a story with Screen Rant. And they asked him about it. They're like, Blart 3, what's up? We've heard a lot of buzz. We've heard a lot of buzz, most of it created by us. Okay, and here's what he said. And and really, like, read between the lines, okay? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, we got to work that one out. I would love that. I don't know what the story is yet, but... It was so much fun shooting in Vegas. That was a great time. There's, yeah, there's something there. There's something, there's something there, right? That's, that's you guys the, feel that too, right? There's the something thing. there. There's I, something there, but I don't know if it's maybe the thing you think it is so much. Well, no. Listen, Trav, his, uh-huh. you've, you've forgotten history. Kevin James got pretty burnt up in the big Sony hack where they revealed yeah. all this stuff about. So he can't say outright like we're doing it baby because then the the hackers will come the back and they'll find John Un will get and, him and they'll find his fucking like PowerPoint presentation that's yeah. like having fun with friends Vegas again gambling risk and love of family question mark? like the big the big bullet points of 3 and then we're all going to be spoiled aren't we so instead my man James comes out and does little little crypt cryptic little messages for the true fans, mm. little ARGs that you really have to dive into, right? I think I, I, okay, I'm not saying that's not the case, but I think that maybe one of the clues of the ARG here that he's laying down is that he's taken on what I like to think of as the Sandler mentality, which is, yeah, I'll do a movie if it's in a place I would also like to take a vacation, yeah. Oh, duh. Yeah. No. No kidding. That's I because mean, I mean he throws it right in there when you say, "Hey, Kevin James, what you know? We're talking about a third Bart," and he's like, "Oh yeah, I loved making Bart too because I got to go to Las Vegas. I, I had a lot of fun with my buddies, right? And yeah. let me say, a lot of people can hate on the Happy Madison Squad and have a lot of justification for doing so. They're living their best lives. They've, they've well, they've they've got a they're good living their best going. lives to their own capacity for best life, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, I think they Kevin's, could probably be using their time better. Right. Kevin's reached the point, though, where, like, he wants to also make art and shit. Like, he's like, I'm, I want to have a good time, but also, like, it's, it's Oscar season. He needs his punch drunk love is what he needs. Yeah. Juice, his, are you, what, you've been quiet, and I feel like usually when you do that, you are Googling something. Or... No, I'm just listening to you guys. Okay. I did my job. I brought you. Do you know how hard I had to work to get these scoops? Yeah. Somebody tweeted sure. it at us, Justin. So Kevin James is a very religious person. Do you guys know this? Oh, Probably. really? It does. It's I a mean, part, it tracks, right? It, if you came to me and was like, Kevin James, hardcore atheist, like t- really belligerent about it, I'd be like, whoa, really? Kevin? Can I tell you something? Here's a quote from a little bit ago. He said, uh, I am involved in my faith. It becomes a difficult, difficult position. You have a platform. And you don't want to do anything that doesn't glorify God in every way. So I just wanted to say that one time Kevin James was lying on the floor of a Vegas hallway interior mall. And he lied there while a actress, um, a young actress, uh, glomped melted ice cream into his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. To sure. cure his diabetes. To glorify God. Yeah. To, and he was thinking like, this is glorifying God in every way. Well, <laughs> and, I, and everything I'm doing right now, this is, this is for God. 
Yeah. I'm going to say this knowing that in four days, um, so much can change. But it is kind of refreshing to hear uh, Kevin James say that, but also uh, not be shitty about it all the time, uh, as happens so often with some people. Um, yeah. I've heard um, some things. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Um, do you, I remember in Grown Ups too when Mr. James burps and farts and sneezes at the same time, and it's like, yeah. you raise me up <laughs> so I can do the mountains. This actually gives me a lot of hope because I, we talked in a, I believe this past year is still Death to a Spark, about the possibility of having a um, Paul Blart set in heaven. One, a yeah. place James wants to go. Two, would glorify God. Right, so like we're setting up like the two biggest. It seems like check marks for a Blart three. Right now, we just need, I think, some way to get another, like maybe get Adam Sandler in there. <gasps> he reprises his role as Little Nicky. Get the fuck oh, out! Yes, yes, yes. Battle for the fate of humanity. That's good. That's good stuff. Anyway, this is an advice show. I actually and just got way too excited about that. Chills. I could tell huh? by the volume. Like, yeah, I said it, and I it felt like I unlocked something, like I was doing an escape room, yeah. and I just found, like, a three-letter word somewhere. That's the excitement like, of the fuck. creative process. And we like to do that here where there are no stakes and no one listens to it. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the perfect time. And, and also, no next step. Like, yeah. I said no that. No follow-up. Yeah, nothing, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to create, like, a pitch for this. My That's sister, up to you, the listener. My sister's fiance only drinks out of empty mason jars when they visit my parents and I. Mm -hmm. At first, I thought we were just out of glasses, which is weird because we have so many glasses that it's hard to fit them all in a cupboard when they're all washed. Ugh. Ugh, don't you hate that? Whenever somebody gets me new mugs at this point, I'm like, well, some of y'all are going to the farm. <laughs> Come but, on. And the problem is exactly that this enough point, room for all the mugs I own. I've already curated my mug collection to a point where I, they all spark joy. I'm so, I'm so picky about mugs. Well, so picky. Tell me you know the, the Austin City Limits mugs that you guys got? Those are perfect. Yeah. Because yeah. it's got bigger than the standard. I can't have a standard 12-ounce mug. Look no. At no. Are you kidding me? Uh, oh. After it happened a few times, we decided to hide the jars in a different cabinet to sway him away from them. Today, he went to get some water and walked back to the living room with, you guessed it, a mason jar. Is there something wrong with our glasses? Who is this jar man? Does he know something that we don't? That's from Novel Sipping in Nova Scotia. Now- we grew up in a house where our mom would routinely clean out jelly jars. Oh, yeah. And they would become the cups. Those are the cups for you now. These yeah. are what we drink out of, these jelly jars. Which is and I think, I, I think it says a lot of uh, bad, sad things that society's moved away from that. Because I remember a time where Welch's, if I remember correctly, it was, was it Garfield themed? Like inside the- Oh, the, those uh, were the fucking days, baby. And it was like, yo, you finished this tiny jelly jar. Hey, guess what? There's Garfield That's in a there. That's a Garfield cup now, baby. Enjoy your liquids. And now we're all just like using cups? Ugh. Now, I will say there's one aspect of this question that, uh, and we, I mean, you know, we're all about context on the show. And I assume- Context of context. Like, yes. Oh. I assume- that he rooted through the kitchen and found one of the mason jars you hid. But it does leave just enough wiggle room for me to wonder, did he bring his own mason jar just Pocket in case jar. he That's couldn't find a mason jar? That's interesting. Hey, let me say this. Fuck glasses. The glass, uh -huh. fuck glass cups. And because okay. I've, I will always spring for a plastic cup over a glass cup because I don't know who had this idea of Hey, let's take this stuff that gets really, really crazy sharp when you do a whoopsie with it uh -huh. and put it as close to our mouth and face as we possibly can. Like, you, you, it's an unnecessary risk, isn't it? I this bet if there I drop is. A, if I drop a plastic cup, worst thing yeah. that happens, liquid on the floor. If I drop a glass, liquid on the floor, and also a bunch of invisible knives everywhere. Cool. Awesome. I bet it was so fucking frustrating for the like scientists that invented like the polycarbonate to make cups out of and they're like, "We did it. We changed the game. Everyone's going to be safe now. No more. What? Okay, time for you guys to all start. Why aren't they? Okay, no, cuz we did it. So everybody can start. You're still buying glass though. Why Norm is everybody normalized still plastic buying glass? Plastic stemware. 
normalize it. Yes. Standardize oh my it. God. I've shreked so many glasses over <laughs> just by turning my huge, terrible body around. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I, I smash a glass now. It also, like, to have a five year old and now a two year old that I smash something and they just yell, like, oh no, or what did you do? And it's like, I know. Don't I worry, also didn't want to do this. Don't worry, sweetie. Daddy made a big purple mess and also invisible knives everywhere. Have so fun. So you're in the just going to stay on that chair and never yeah. walk on the ground ever again. It's ridiculous. Get that glass out of here. Anyway, um, and without fail, I will like hands and knees like scour that place to try to pick up all the glass. And then two hours later, Teresa will come to me and be like, "Hey, did you break a glass?" I'm like, "Yeah." And she's like, "Yeah, there was glass everywhere." I'm like, "Where?" I think a mason jar is one of those things that is charming, it like as- aesthetically, right? It sure. is. Yeah. It is uh, by by definition kind of a, a cutesy thing to drink out. We got me and Rachel got married in Texas, so of course we came home from that wedding with approximately six hundred thousand mason jars. Yeah, and we drank out of them for a while, but then eventually we were like. This is this is too many of the same type of thing that is made out of glass to have in our home. And so we took it out on the street. We threw them on cars that went by. Yes. Ooh, no, wait, wait. Like that's a, bonding. That's a romantic thing f- for us to do. Um, hey, can we approach the wizard's throne? Wait, I'd just real that. quick. I'm yeah. betting that this is like his thing. You know what I mean? I'm the mason jar guy. You know, that's his thing. That's interesting. I'm a cowboy, baby. I Which drink out of mason jars are, that don't uh, I mean, sleep inside. Probably part of it is just like you get used. I'm like I said, like I like four cups. There's four cups I like. Maybe that's just all he likes. He doesn't. It doesn't make him feel good to drink out of other cups. Maybe you have like I don't want to be this guy, but like maybe you have bad cups. Ooh, does he you got know? big hands and you got little thin cups and makes I'm him feel like a monster? Cause that happens to me sometimes. I'm just saying it's possible you have bad cups. This is true. Maybe he's never used a cup before and he sees your cups and he's like, I bet that's for science. I'm gonna use the drinking jars. Interesting, interesting. Um, okay, so this 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 uh, little magic spell from the wizard is a is a great. Wait, monster. is he approaching us? Did he bring it to us this time? We approached each other, and Ben oh, Ben can't nice. Ben can't kind of facilitated it. Thank you, Ben. Um, it's how to find gifts for people who bug you. Wait. Oh, I guess. Okay. Did Justin okay. just? Did you just cough and mute it because it sounded like you just gasped like a like an actual dinosaur? I did. Just I'm head. a radio professional. Okay. I don't like to cough into the mic. So, but I do like how you let us see the build up to it, though. Yeah. Well, I wasn't that quick on the trigger, but it kind of came out of nowhere. All okay. Right. I'm gonna start reading. <gasps> <laughs> there's some. Fu- there's so funny. There are people in life that no matter how hard you try to be open and think good of, bug you for one reason or other. Yeah, gosh, I, yeah. I wonder what that's like. <laughs> Finding a gift for these people can be really, Imagine really hard. Imagine doing a podcast with them. <laughs> Because your head Sydney is saying, Sydney bugs you that much? Listen, finding a Shape. gift for these people can be really, really hard because your head is saying, find the cheapest, nastiest thing out there while your heart no. wants to do the right thing. So this, I guess, is their way of threading that needle, although it is, I would say it it trends much more toward the nastiest, cheapest thing out there side of no. things. So It's not, wait, it's not about what the your heart wants to do the right thing. Yeah. You have to be the bigger person. So they're annoying, but you're... Great. So you yeah, give them you're something. Gonna, you're going to give them a bunch of really clever gifts. Juice, this first one's great for you. So um, just a hot tip. Um, purchase a large wooden spoon for the troublemaker in your family or workplace. That person who is always causing trouble, stirring up a mess and sticking their nose where it isn't wanted. This gift says, watch it. We think you're a pot stirrer. For the less obtuse, this present is nicely pointed. <sighs> so what? W- what? So fucking wicked. This is already... Can I say the wildest one of these I've ever yeah. heard? This is off to such a tremendously forceful start. Yeah. What if me and Travis spent the whole episode making fun of your dumb cough, and then two days later you shipped us big wooden spoons, and you're like, get it, you fucking jerks? Well, I'll ship you like tiny wooden coffins and be like, now nah, who's coughing? Whoa, wait. That That's, might be that taken actually goes completely a little too far. Can I say something, though? Fuck, I love wooden cookware. Oh, my God. Oh, I was going to say, if I got a tiny wooden coffin, I'd actually think that was really cool. 
Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I've got a spoonchula made out of wood. It's got a slot on the side where it can rest on your pant on your hell yeah. it. Oh, I love this guy. That's uh, it, baby. Now let me just say that if I were the receiver of a giant spoon, and I wouldn't say I'm obtuse, as I, I, yeah. you know, compared to I don't know, I'm probably slightly above average as far as not being obtuse goes. I think I would open it and be like, "What the fuck is this?" And I think like, someone would have to say, because you're always stirring out the pot. Right. And I'd be like, so you went to a lot of trouble, huh? So like, because I know you can't just pick up giant spoons like this anywhere you go. Is this why? Hey, just give me a big box of dirt or something <laughs> next time, man. Uh, this next one goes, I would say, in the polar opposite direction. Uh, wrap up some personal hygiene products for the person who never bathes or who breathes down your neck lasciviously, even wow. though this person knows you're taken. Those are two profoundly different things. That is, yeah. Hey, yeah. Derek, I got you this hygiene kit because you stink. And hey, Marcus, I got you this one because you're trying to fuck me. And I don't <laughs> Yeah, I, I would actually argue the person who's trying to fuck you and you give them a bunch of like bath toothpaste. and shower stuff yeah is that that seems like make yourself ready marcus yeah it's going down on sunday dude and, and can <laughs> i also just say this kind of makes it seem like how to be a bully because if yeah. you're like oh you know that guy he really bugs me because of his hygiene issues and i'm gonna call it out in front of everyone at the white elephant party or whatever and be like whoa in middle school at, at, at Kamak Middle School, the most brutal thing you could do to somebody for a, a good long time was to walk up to them and say, take a bath, wash yourself. Yeah. And people would do that to each other and the other person would just crumble. They would collapse in on themselves <laughs> like a dying star. Like, oh, fuck, there's no comeback to that. You can't be like, no, actually, you're the one with bad hygiene. Anyway. Yeah. Um, this one's great. You get blasted first. There's no. Yeah. You can't come it. back with that because it's like, oh, you would say that even if you have impeccable hygiene. This and then you also can't say like, I bathed this morning, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> like, that also doesn't work. This one is so fucking brutal. If I ever got this one, I would, oh, I would just leave. Give that lazy son-in-law a cooking set and a food processor. It's time he understood what? that cooking is for anyone in the household, not just your daughter. Holy crap. Now, now, okay. This is, can I just say, assuming a lot of things. Sometimes people share responsibilities, and sometimes people split responsibilities. And to say, like, this is a wild thing to do, right? Not, not only that, but it's also like, hey, Derek, you lazy fuck. Here's seven hundred and fifty dollars in William Sonoma cookware, and it's like, yeah. God Almighty, thank you, holy shit! This is beautiful. This is amazing. No, you don't get it. You need to learn to cook. Well, I will now. This is awesome. Yeah, thank this you. Is great, thanks. I feel like my message isn't landing. <laughs> uh, the that one that can never be punctual. Let them know that they're always being late for everything is annoying by buying them a watch. So next time they're late, you can ask them, what's wrong with the watch I got you? <laughs> Once again, like, if someone oh. got me a watch, I'd be like, oh, it's beautiful, thank you. And I'm like, got them. <laughs> oh, man, this next one's not fucking weird at all, so perish the thought of it being weird. But give a sexy lingerie set to the prim and proper daughter-in-law who is driving you crazy with her perfectness. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Ooh. What? Got them. What? Em. Hey. Hey, uh, Samantha. Wait, I've been stuck on the name Samantha. I feel bad that I I feel like we're on a Samantha, like. Try Judith. Ju hey, Judith. You're so <laughs> prim and proper. Check out this sexy lingerie. <laughs> you know, I, I was going to say, like, maybe it's from the mom in the set, but even then, there is no scenario in which this isn't like. Both yeah. curvy and also kind of like have fun having sex with my kid. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like, the the next f uh, couple sentences are pretty dope. She'll be embarrassed at what possible thoughts are going through your head about her relations with your son. But be I bet your son will be totally cool with all this. But be forewarned that given even as a joke, you may forever be labeled as a dirty old man or woman by everyone present. Yeah, that seems like a w good trade off. Worth it. <laughs> worth it, baby. <laughs> worth the risk. No. Um. Okay. Okay, that's great. I, what happens, though, if your son gives you a big thumbs up? Like, thanks, guys. Thanks, Dad. This is going to give me mad boners. Uh, 
<laughs> a lot of stuff about in-laws, because this next one is give uncaring parents-in-law a large photo of you in a beautiful frame. I'm actually so into this. Uh, so they didn't put your picture out with the rest of the family, or at least not one large enough to match the others. Make it up. Make up for it with this wonderful in-your-face addition to the family photo collection. It's a difficult gift to wriggle out of displaying. Make sure your smile is large. I feel like my smile's always large. <laughs> are we talking like like a like a like a two by th- like what are we talking like a giant you know like would go over the yeah. mantle four foot by eight foot kind of deal? Because I'm way into that. Like, hey, um, I got you this. Uh, I and I expect to see it every time I come over, so and I could come over. Anytime. There's an amazing illustration here of what looks like a crash test dummy with a wig on holding up a picture frame of himself, and it's about the size of his torso, so that's a big one. Hey, how come we never use the adjective large to describe somebody's smile? Mm. A beautiful, large smile. I think you would if you were talking about like the Cheshire Cat or some kind of demon. That's fair. Make a whistle and stopwatch kit. Give this to the bossy person in your life. It sends a message to them that you haven't exactly enjoyed their need to tell you what to do and when. So really, this this <laughs> article should be titled How to Tell the People Annoy You That They Fucking Suck, but also you spent money on it. <laughs> yeah, but also in like the most annoying way possible. Like also the most like, give me a second to, ex- let me just explain why this do you get Listen, it? I'm sick of your shit. Burn. You don't get this, but it's like, honestly, like a really good burn. And just give me a second to explain it to you, please. Now, I do actually like this because it could be fuel for your frustration fire that you're like, I put together this fucking great whistle and stopwatch bit. And then this asshole didn't even bother to get the joke. Fuck him. I. <sighs> Consider music. What person? Consider music. A song Consider you know music. they don't they don't much like can turn into an entire CD by the artist in question. After they open it, it's that's a f- sorry. A song you know they don't much like can turn into an entire CD by the artist in question. If you bury it in the ground and then it grows. <laughs> <gross. laughs> yeah, I think the their their language here is a bit more passive than they intended yeah. for it to be. Like <laughs> it can turn into that with some I don't know the machinations right. given the right circumstances. Uh, after they open it, insist they play it for everyone to hear. This is a great Christmas showstopper. An album or mix CD with <laughs> lyrics that touch on your frustration with this person can also have an interesting effect. Everyone, clear your schedules for the next 45 minutes. Yeah. I've made an en- Enrique Iglesias mix CD, and yeah. we're all going to sit here and listen to it because because uh, Dave doesn't like Bailamos. Yeah. Hey, Wait, Dad. who doesn't like Bailamos? Hey, Dad, put uh, that CD on that I got you. Sure, son. Click. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Like, oh man. <laughs> That's right. I have frustration with you. Provide oh, a set of- I was just gonna say I love Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, sure. Provide a set of knives to someone who backstabbed you. What? Uh, it doesn't have to be real knives. Plastic toy ones from the dollar store still carry the message perfectly well. Yeah, just get this person knives and a spoon and a cookware set and their kitchen is furnished. Well done. You got him. You hey, got him. Wiki how author? If I opened, okay, you're telling me that me opening a set of like real ass like kitchen knives and opening a dollar store set by a a beautiful ornate (laughs) kitchen knives is the same message as me opening a set of dollar store plastic like toy knives. And I'd be like, oh, I get it. I'm a backstabber. I got it. Um, Keep your sense of humor throughout this exercise. It's meant to be a lighthearted response. Isn't it weird? Can I just say something? If you have a box of knives in a tasteful case, yeah, and you wrap it up and you give it to someone and they open it and they're like, oh, look at this. This is lovely. Thank you so much. So that's that. But if you take a single knife mm. and just wrap it um, sort of like uncautiously in wrapping paper yeah, yeah. and then give it to the person... Then they get all weird about it. Uh, it's yeah. like, I'm sorry I couldn't afford a whole set, but like you don't need to be weird about and it. And if you yeah. deliver those knives to them, like to their front door anonymously one at mm-hmm. a time, like over a long period of time, like, like say Like stabbed a year, into a pumpkin or whatever. Or just like yeah. wrapped in a Kroger bag or something. Yeah. You know, and, and suddenly you're arrested. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to send the message that you're a backstabber, Stephen. Keep a sense of humor. It's meant to be a lighthearted response to real challenges that you're facing. 
Uh, and it may backfire with some recipients. If that is an outcome you're prepared to face, these gift ideas might be for you. If not, try more constructive means for approaching the nagging mother-in-law, the overbearing boss, the faithless lover, whoa, or the whining whoa. friend. Merry, Christ- Merry Christmas, Diane. Oh, plastic knives? Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you got me and John the same present. Yeah. yeah. I know. Uh, get it. <laughs> Can I just say a quick question here? I got you a cuckoo clock because I know. <laughs> I know what you've done to me in my own house. And it's also, a here's a big spoon, John, you pot stirrer. I got you the big spoon and her the little spoon because I know everything. Ding I know dong, it all. Ding dong. Cuckoo. Cuckoo. Wait, you actually made the bird say cuckoo. Yes, I did. Yeah. A lot of free time since you've been entertaining my <laughs> wife. And you <laughs> you recognize that voice? That's Steve Goomberg. I got him to do it on Cameo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. Can I also just say real quick, just a little note, I love that they say these might backfire. It is unclear to me what the front fire hope is. Like, I, what were you hoping would fire you out of this? You me, I yeah. guess. You got me. Uh, I well, love this, f- and it's taught me a lesson about not bugging you, I guess. The last one is just an image I want. Maybe we can share it on the Soshi after this episode comes up, but I'm going to send it to you guys in a minute. Uh, but the title is, For those bad folks bad-mouthing you while their glass house reveals that one or both of them are married to someone else, paper mache initials painted red, either with a craft brooch pin on the back or hanger for a tree. Most won't get the scarlet letter reference, but you will. That's fucking Whoa. wild. What's even wilder is that that tooltip is accompanied by this image, which I've just sent to you boys on Slack. What? <laughs> what? This is what? A de- this is a deem this is a demon. This is a what demon the? with a cur- it looks like a monster from a Dragon Ball or something. Like somebody's like kind of a, lo- a sloppy one that's um, kind of falling down a hole slowly. It's like a middle it, it school. It looks like somebody was doing oh, like their math homework and started doodling on the side of this, and like got re- like just got way too into this creature they were making. The 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 picture's wild. For those folks bad mouthing you, while their glass house reveals that one or both of them are married to someone else. What is what? that? What what is that married? What does that mean? One or both of them. How to reveal people you know is infidelities. Use this <laughs> demon. This demon will shout in the middle of the city. Everyone hey, knows. I heard that John and <laughs> Judith were together. John and but... Judith been sneaking. Anyways, here's an ornament for your Christmas tree. It's a scarlet letter. We couldn't find an A, though, so it's a D. Do, do you get it still? Anyway, uh, time to turn you all into stone. Uh, that's not part of the thing. That's just for me. That's for me. So that's, also, uh, uh, Steven said he wants to try to work it out still. And that's really how to zap. Zap the folks you hate Those with nice things from William Son- Sonoma. Oh, okay. Ooh, juice. Yeah, is Justin is it. podcasting so hard he's having a uh, nosebleed, so it's time to go to the money zone. No, I want to. I mean, okay, we can channel that energy um, in the money zone, I guess. Yeah, you guys got this. I'll be right back. Hey, Griffin, this isn't for the show, but I was wondering, uh, do you know anything um, about Babel that you could tell me? Not not like like off air. Oh, shit. Yeah. You Uh, do? Yeah, it's like a like dope way to learn a new language Um, because it's just like. It's so easy. You do these like 15 minute lessons that make it so simple to learn a new language on the go. Yeah. And like they have 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. They have German. Yeah. Uh, yes. And they also, it's not just like you, they are like, say, uh, bueno. And then they're like, we trust that you said it right. They have speech recognition technology that helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. Oh, I could really use that. I know. Do you have any way that I could like save money on it though? Um, I mean, they do, n- unfortunately not for us, but for our oh. listeners, yes. Because when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you can get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three if you go to babbel.com and use promo code MYBROTHER. All one word. That's B A B B E L dot com. Code my brother. Babble. Language for life. Wait, hold on, Griffin. 
are we not supposed to be using our own promo codes? Because I do that all the time. Am I going to get in trouble? I did actually just sign up for something that we have advertised for in the past and punched in my promo code. Like, oh, I heard about this one from a little <laughs> show from my, my three favorite guys. Oh, it really helps us out when you do that. Yeah, so sure. Thanks to everybody who does that. This is yours, your turn, Juice. Okay. Uh, well, allow me to step in here and tell you all about honey. You shove some toilet paper in your nose or what? What? I, it's irrelevant. Uh, listen, let me tell you about honey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to throw in the flag, Justin. No, I can you, keep going. If you <laughs> cut me, if you if you are running low on stuff like new t shirts or toilet paper, then uh, you got to go shopping online. Did you get stores blood on your t shirt, Justin? <laughs> they don't have they don't have stores anymore. You got to go online, and your best friend for online shopping is Honey. Honey is like if you're at a real store, like a physical store, yes. and you every tag you got to take a peek inside the tag and you had a friend that's like here this is not this much let me fix this for you that's what honey does it checks for uh when you're shopping online it checks for codes and things like that to help you save real money let me put it this way say you wanted to watch the movie honey with your honey while you eat honey yeah honey can help you with that honey can help you with that over 17 million members over two billion dollars wow. in savings that's billion with a b my i friend. actually could not tell because of your condition this isn't about me it's about honey i this is what i really use all the time and it's always such a delight because i i've saved like 20 30 bucks on a purchase before it's wild uh and 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 you also don't have that lingering like even when honey doesn't have a code for you you know that you're getting the best deal right and that's that's very refreshing if you don't already have honey you could be missing out on free savings it's literally literally free and installs in just a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash brother. That's joinhoney.com slash brother. Hi, I'm Jesse Thorne, America's radio sweetheart. And I'm Jordan Morris, boy detective. Our comedy podcast, Jordan Jesse Go, just celebrated its 15th anniversary. It was a couple months ago, but we forgot. Uh, yeah, completely. Our, our silly show is 15 years old. That makes it old enough to get its learner's permit. And almost old enough to get the talk. Wow, I hope you got the talk before then. A lot of things have changed in 15 years. Our show's not one of them. We're never changing and you can't make us. Jordan, Jesse, go the same forever at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Prepare yourself for the greatest pro wrestling podcast spectacular known as Tights and Fights. A back-dropping audio showcase that helps you understand the world of pro wrestling with a lot of love and no toxic masculinity. Featuring host Danielle Radford. Time to kick butt and chew gum, and I'm all out of butts. Lindsay Cow. I'm a brutal Brit, and my fists were made to punch and hit. And Hal Lublin. I was doing the voiceover this whole time. Hear us talk about pro wrestling's greatest triumphs and failures. And make fun of its weekly absurdities. On the Perfect Wrestling Podcast. Tights and Fights. Every Saturday, Saturday, Saturday on Maximum Fun. If that doesn't win us the best advertising on a podcast award, like Justin playing through the pain, yeah. I don't know what will. You know what I mean? Like... Well, no one else is out here playing hurt. Everybody, Conan O'Brien gets a nosebleed and he takes two weeks off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, ugh. I think consistently producing a good quality show is probably the best way to get awards. Okay, Griffin. Yeah, but what about stunts? There we go. Can we do um, a stunt right now? I'm going to freeze myself in a block of ice and hang over Times Square for the rest of this episode. I could do the, I could do, we finally have saltines. I could do the saltine challenge if we need a stunt. Now, Not Justin, with a bloody you say finally, Justin, how long worst. have you been looking for the saltines? I just happened to have saltines now as we're recording and thinking about saltines and stunts came came up. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Cool. Cool. So I don't. Badass, man. I, 
I don't need to do this stunt, though, if you guys think it's kind of, like, childish. I mean, it's definitely childish, but that doesn't mean you don't need to do it. But I'd like you to do it on your own first to see how it goes. Because if you die, oh, I would funny. like it to not be on the that's phone with funny. me. That's not funny. It doesn't have to be funny, own, Justin. They know how it'll go. What? Like, if I do it by myself, then I'll know how it'll go. And then I do it here, and it's like, whatever. You know what I mean? You don't yeah, think David sure. Blaine practices his stunts at home? No, every time he's like, fuck. I hope, th- I hope this works. <laughs> I fucked it up again. <laughs> I'm going to put myself in a giant fishbowl. Can you Ooh. swim? No. No, I can't. No. Bye. Um, yeah, like I did. Uh, I wrote, Speaking of dares, the um, Arby's has a new Diablo dare sandwich, yeah. right? Yeah. You can get it in like beef or chicken. Are you oh, saying yeah. beef? Beef, beef they have it in chicken. Beef. And it's like, you could get it, and it's supposed to be like, this is so fucking spicy. Do a TikTok of how you eat it. It will kill you. <laughs> You'll die in real life. And I tried it. It's like a little spicy. <laughs> it was like, it's just a little spicy. Cool, man. I well, I recorded the audio because I was thinking like, oh, this will be so fun. I'll play it on the show and like, it'll be great to bring to the show. And it's just this audio of me like, Eating a mildly spicy sandwich. Yeah. It's like this isn't pod. This isn't even podcast worthy. No. And that's saying something. Yeah. Uh, is, so yeah. is this a Munch Squad? Are we? Did you no, just backdoor? No. Okay. No, it's just just friends talking about. But we don't. Just, but it's not a bit. You know what I mean? What do you mean? Well, like, on this show we do. Have, like, on this show we do bits. Oh, so you prefer me to be like dum ba 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 ba? Yeah, that's good. Exactly. Whoa. I want a munch. No, I'm not going to go. I want a munch. Squad. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast profiling the latest and greatest in brand eating. Justin, I, I want you to know you real quick, there's yeah? some levels of energy that I feel comfortable meeting you at, and yeah. then there are some that I just can't. I can't get to. Yeah, that didn't, conf- that, didn't, that didn't confront me. It's all good. Okay, it didn't bother me. I'm I'm out here on my own, a, a star sailor. You know, I've yeah. always said that about you. Yes, I don't need a tether. I'm like the little prince. I just grabbed a comet, my net, and I'm zooming away. You know, it's all right. You can't come with. Oh, yeah. I did mean to tell you. I finished that drawing of a sheep you asked me for, but I did draw it inside a box so I wouldn't eat your rose. Here you go. That's an uh, NFT, you- so that is going to cost you about fifty thousand. <laughs> Our line of NFTs is coming. Yes. It's all Little Prince theme. It's all Little Prince theme. Uh, make sure you water the NFTs' roots and not their petals. Thank you very much. God, guys, if you missed a few weeks ago when Richard Karn was like, I'm fully doing an NFT, and then everybody's like, fuck off. And then he's like, I've, I've thought about this. <laughs> now is not the right and time I, for me to enter the yeah, NFT Yeah, now market. is not the moment for my NFT. <laughs> so McDonald's is going to start serving fan-inspired mashups. Huh. Menu hacks, order by name, and build by hand. Do you know what I'm saying to you right now? What I'm saying to you is you will order the menu hack. Yeah. They will give you the components of the hack. Then you do it. Huh. (laughs) Then you make this. That seems like the opposite of why I go to a place to get It feels like them trying to limit their liability, right? Like- you order it and they'll give it to you, but they're not going to hand it to you. Like they're not going to, they're going to hand you the bullets and the pistol, well, but they're not actually right. going to load it for you. I still right? want you to feel like it's a hack. And also they don't want to do the work, but it's kind of badass, right? It's kind of like Korean barbecue, you know? Um, when uh, is McDonald's going to install a grill right there in the middle of my car, come into my car, make the burger for me while I watch. I got two of these to get through. This is starting January 31st, only in the app. Um, I want you guys to guess what these are. The first one is a gimme. Hash brown McMuffin. Is a McMuffin oh, with a hash McMuffin brown. McMuffin hash brown, yeah. Sausage McMuffin with egg and hash brown. Great. Yum. That should right? already be a thing, by the that's, way. That's, uh, what is that in Tudor's parlance? Is that a Mountaineer? I think that's a Mountaineer. Um, I only get a Rob B, so I don't know. Um, crunchy Double. Yeah. Mm, this is a sausage sandwich with bacon on it? No. This is, this is the, the, that is the only breakfast offering. The rest of these oh, are okay. lunch and dinner offering. Is, uh, this a, is this a chicken sandwich with bacon on it? Is this a hamburger with a fried chicken patty on it? No. Very close, though. The Crunchy Double is a double cheeseburger 
with six chicken McNuggets and barbecue sauce. Well, those are just going to mm. fall all over the fucking place. Yeah, it should just be one patty. Mm. Next up is the Surf and Turf. Now, this one I know. This is filet of fish and a hamburger. Uh, that is correct, Travis. That's a, Well, no. It's incorrect. It's a double cheeseburger. Okay, whatever. Oh, that's a lot you of patties then, huh? It's a lot of patties, but not as much as the land, air, and sea. Now, this one I also horrifyingly know. This is a double cheeseburger with filet of fish and a chicken patty. Uh, well, no, it's a Big Mac with a McChicken and a filet. You knew what I meant, Josh. No, Travis, you said well, a double. That would be the screen four... menu items. If you want to see, look at this. Fuck, Fuck yes. Gas. Feed my family for a week. Yes. You said those f- are four. You said, I thought you said five offerings. Well, just four. They're beautiful. They'll... They're beautiful. You can order them in the app. And... <laughs> oh, damn it. Justin bled too much. Are we in a new season, or is there a new donut out? It's, Hello, boys. It's donut based. What a pleasure it is to be with you. Hi there. Um, oh, there's blood everywhere here. Oh, God. Oh, I'm I didn't even so consider. Did you come from inside? Do you come from inside? Hold on, I must lick Justin. Do you face. eat blood? I thought you ate donuts. Is, I don't discriminate. They're is two donut different things. just your They're... name? Come, donut. I love donuts. Aesthetically, but oh, okay. that which sustains you no longer sustains oh, me. That's horrible. You love donuts, but you can't eat them. I could. Oh, you can eat them. I don't prefer. They make them very sick. keto. Yeah. I <laughs> like. I can eat I have, donuts, but if I ate blood, I would get a big tummy ache. I have a gluten intolerance. Oh no! Your only weakness. <laughs> That's what makes this story so perfect for me. Okay. Crispy cream. I like that. Is of, or I'm Count Donut. If this is your first time listening. If I this is their first time listening, they already jarring. turned it off. Yeah. yeah, they're gone. Crispy cream offers a free dozen to Red Cross blood donors. Oh, sick. A dozen yes. donuts if I just give away a little bit of blood? The American Red Cross is facing its worst blood shortage in over a decade. And Krispy Kreme has announced it will thank everyone who donates blood or platelets January 24th through 31st. This includes my favorite donation, Power Red. Do you know about this? Mm. Delicious. They just take out the blood and put back in the stuff they don't need. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Since then, severe weather has further complicated efforts to rebuild the Red Cross blood supply including hundreds of blood drives canceled due to winter storms. Now. Due to the severity of the shortage, the Red Cross continues to limit certain blood product distributions to hospitals depending on current inventories, which seems like perhaps too much context for a news story about free donuts. But I digress. It's vital that donors continue to come forward in the days and weeks. And what's happening? Well, Dave Skinner, the Krispy Kreme Simo is here to help. We're grateful for all that the American Red Cross does for our country, and we want to help them. Hopefully, a free original glaze dozen will increase oh, awareness. Okay, you can't even spring for frosting, Dave. Okay. No, you don't get to pick, and you can't fight us for it because you're weak from blood loss. You will take what you are offered, <laughs> you bloodless baby. If I give two pints, can I get sprinkles? If you give two pints, your only donut will be the grave. We're encouraging all, oh, this is, this is my, <laughs> this is the good part. We're also encouraging all of our employees who can donate to do so, says Dave Skinner. So, <laughs> in case your employer, Krispy Kreme, has not offered you enough, as if the labor shortage was not dire enough, <laughs> Now this donut store is making its workers give their succulent blood. Do they also get the free dozen, though? Or is that like... This is a fantastic question. I assume every Krispy Kreme employee is at home with hundreds of donuts that will be inedible by the following morning. Um, cool. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with any of that stuff. Um, I, Those like, people I, should go donate blood if they're able to. Do you? I mean, donuts or oh, uh, not, but... Well, 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 go, go do the right thing. I'm Travis. Uh... But for real, though, I've got so much blood. And you know what yeah. I don't have? 12 donuts now. Is it a 
Do you get a baker's dozen or is it just a dozen? dozen? Is it? Ju- oh, this is an important question. Is this a one time offer? Because I have a lot of pints saved up. Oh, yeah. That I could like turn in yes. like Pepsi yes. points. Yes. <laughs> turn in your, your Pepsi points. My Pepsi I, points I, are bud. My I pint almost, points. I never get cuts or scrapes because of the mm-hmm. way I, the, my incredibly sedentary lifestyle. So yeah. I must have, I'm, I must be like a tick. Like so much deeply engorged, so I, engorged. This is this is unfortunate timing in in a way, because Justin just gave blood the last week. Are you able the, to like show the receipt and get it? Still, uh, yes. guys, hold on. Yes, sec- this hold is- on. Sorry, my the sound on my track is going to be weird for a second. There's a parade outside on the street for Justin uh, for giving blood, uh, and it's making they're making a lot of noise. They're chanting, Justin, Justin, he gave blood. He's a good guy. Uh, Didn't just, even oh. do it for donuts or nothing. Well, this is the problem <laughs> that he now faces. <laughs> if he redeems this offer it, with the general sort of like body he's walking around the earth in, right. if he goes to Krispy Kreme they are going to know two things immediately. One, this man drove an hour to get these <laughs> free donuts. And two, this man gave his blood to get these donuts. What? 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 what how desperately does this man love Krispy Kreme? There's a cost in gas for your car to drive that far. And there's also a cost in body gas, which is blood. The, the gasoline for your body. Right. But anyway, if you are able to donate, uh, please find a drive near you. Go to redcrossblood.org or 1-800-RED-CROSS. People need this delicious blood. There's something I, Something tells me that might have been a little more I effective. I can tell from Justin's, he's a positive. Yeah, would have been mission. more effective had it not been in Count Donut's voice, but mm. a good message. I just like, it makes me feel relaxed knowing that there are buildings that hold oodles of free, delicious blood. But, okay. Right. This is why I'm saying that you might be kind of undermining, like, oh, it's fine. It's great. Yeah, do that. I just buy the blood types. I steal the blood types that nobody the wants. The shitty ones. Yeah. Like D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you have D, I steal the Why is yes. your blood so chunky? Oh, it's a- uh, <laughs> I love a chunky blood. It's a D. Well, thanks, Count Donut. This is the first sort of, um, I don't know beneficial service you've ever provided, maybe. Who's Count Donut? Uh, now, you know who Count Donut is, You do is, know who Justin. Count Donut is. You've this listened. is no, not I don't, part of the, is, is this a My Brother, My Brother Me character? Because I don't know. You never listened to. No, why would I listen to my own podcast? That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Where, why is it, where'd all my blood go? Wait, um, does he drain it from the inside? I had no, I had piles of it surrounding me. Oh, what? I, yeah, it's, cr- what? it's all gone. Didn't you just donate blood? Oh no, you know what? I didn't even think about this, Griffin. I did donate blood. Thank you for bringing that up, by the way. Not a, not, not enough people have really celebrated me, <laughs> celebrated me for that. Um, uh, I just wish there was a way that I could get free donuts out of it. That 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 is what Don't we need, really. So you should wicked listen to our show sometime. Okay, yeah, I'll check it's it out. It's pretty funny sometimes. We do, good, we do yeah. skits. Nice. How about another question? Yeah. 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 I work for a funeral home. My boss expects me to hand out business cards. I would love to reach out to families that need us, but how on earth do I do this without looking like capitalist vulture? That's from embalming in the Emerald City. That's interesting. That's interesting. Speak on that. <clears throat> I guess they can't. No, um, they're not here. Yeah, it's it's it, that's not possible. I think you have to, your only option here is to be a pickpocket that can sort of slip these into people's. No, because that's that's terrifying. If you, it's terrifying, right? I mean, it's beyond terrifying. That's worse. You have described the worst version of this. Now, Good. No, now, now we found bottom. Let's call no, it the worst here. version. Is like you see someone like a little kid playing chess with their people in the park, and you go over to the little kid and like, mm, people, huh? Just keep us in mind, and you hand him a business card. Yeah, that's hand the. Sorry, wait, stop. Hand the kid a business. Yeah, card? Yeah, that's the worst version. Card. I'm Get saying that's the worst version. Of like, you do need to clarify for me if you are handing the card to the child. To the child, you're assuming will be the executor of of Peepaw's uh, misfortune. Peepaw's not going to do it. He's dead. Yeah, Peepaw. Yes, but okay. 
Here's no one's thing. playing with their own elderly father in the park. It's always grandchildren and people, Justin. When was the last this time you and pro- dad sat down at the park to play a round of chess? This is the problem with funeral homes is that they only do that. You know, if I see a sign oh. for a funeral home I'm, while I'm driving around, I'll like avert my eyes because like I don't need it right now. You know what I mean? Like I don't need the anxiety. I don't need the like existential, all that stuff. Like, I just, like, don't, whatever. It's bumming me out. I'm not going to pay attention. But if the sign said embalming Aunt Froyo, then I might stop in and start to get a little bit more comfortable, work through these, like, sort of, like, deeply American ideas about death and mortality and stuff like that. Because, like, oh, that's the, oh, I know that place. That's where I get Froyo. So you can hand people a business card and be like, you look like someone who's going to live a long, natural life, but also enjoys Froyo. So why don't you hold on to this card? Yeah. It's a punch card. And it does have the number for you. It does. It's good to call life some cases. That's just good. okay. But, ju- ooh, 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 ooh. Can I take it and add a little spice? Add a little That's what flavor? you do, Travis. That's what yeah, you do that's here. Your, that's why they call you the Spice Man. <laughs> the Spice Man. Look, funeral Home slash Arcade. Right, and you can that turn in tickets. Oh, that's great to co- for the kids. Too. Well, and here's the great thing about it, right? Funerals, oh, so expensive, right? Big lump sum, but over time, I'm paying in quarters over like 20 years, and then I can cash in those tickets. And it's like, oh, that that very nice casket. You're gonna need twenty thousand tickets for that. I'm just. I don't think there should be for my idea to be a good one, and we all know it is. I don't think there can be any connection between the two businesses. It's literally just about knowing. Oh, that's the place. I do know of one funeral home. It's the place where I go to play spin to win and get like giant inflatable teddy bears. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's no connection between the two businesses. Um, it's like how sometimes there's a Chili's too inside an airport. No one would go to an airport if there weren't restaurants there. Well, I think they would because of the main function of an airport. But I see I what mean, you're saying. Listen. I don't know why what they have against Southwest egg rolls. They're already there. It's you know? it, Googling and yelping places to go for a not bummer thing already kind of sucks. Right? When it's like, oh mm. well, we have to go find a notary public or whatever. We'll get on Yelp to find the right one. That sucks. Having to do that for it's like, oh man, peeps peep, peeps paw beefed it. Um, who does good, hey guys, who does good, uh, <laughs> death parties? It's like, oh shit, I don't know. So maybe giving them a business card is up front pretty terrible, but when Peepo f- falls down that big hole and does pass away, to be able to be like, fuck, well, at least we got this great recommendation on this business card and we don't have to go around searching for like who does the best dead parties because we know that they've got it on lockdown. Now, Griffin, you've made me think that it might be a branding issue. Funeral home? Bummer. Yeah. End game strategist? Awesome. I love that. This is what I'm saying because, like, I don't want to go. Oh, like, if I'm getting up there and it's like, I need to plan this shit out, I don't want to go to a fucking funeral. But if I can do, like, the Nintendo helpline of dying, yes. fuck yeah, dude, I'm doing that. Encore. Encores. Ooh. Encores. Ooh. That's cool. One more, one more number. One more performance. Encore. I like yeah. that. Welcome to Curtain Call in Bombing. Final countdown. <laughs> Welcome to Curtain Call in Bombing and Arcade. Ooh, I like that. That's oh good. yeah, I like that. And and you know what? We're looking to expand into go karts in the yeah. spring. Oh man, this would ca- create a weird dynamic though for kids who aren't that close to their great grandparents. <laughs> who like <laughs> we want them to live a nice, long, natural life. But do understand that when something does go wrong, they will get to go. <laughs> hey. They will get to go play skee ball. Yeah. So great, happy, great, happy. Just checking in. How are you feeling today? Because I did are just get my allowance, and I need to know if I should <laughs> save it. Or not, I, can I spend it? Are you going to be kicking you another I week? I wish nothing but the best for you. I'm just trying to do some financial planning here. What? And I do have a $10 bill. And I need to know if I should save it for skee ball or is it cool to go ahead? Oh, what? Did you just cough? Okay, I'm going to put that right, uh, right. here in the that old bigaroonie. Let me hit you with this. Funeral home. And Ooh. this one is just like 
uh, outdoor like celebration, just kick mm-hmm. kick my dead ass body down the hole raw and bury me. And then DJ Khaled is like, "All right, let's fucking let's get it let's get it started." And also funnel cakes. Funnel cakes could be there. We all love Griffin. A- he did a great job. <laughs> here's here's a rebranding container store. Okay. Okay. Like in the back room of the container store, there yeah. is. Or Bed Bath & Beyond is also already right there. <laughs> way, way beyond. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Bed Bath & The Great Beyond. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. We hope you've enjoyed yourself. Uh, we are so thrilled to be here with you every week uh, to to share a little time with you. We're so flattered that you have, have made that choice yet again. If you enjoyed this week's show, uh, we, and we almost never mentioned this, but uh, it would be very helpful if you would like rate or review the show or, you know what, just tell a friend like, hey, I know it seems overwhelming to get on board with the 590. <laughs> <laughs> but this is when it's Stupid starting to get care. good. But it's just starting to get good. Uh, Hey, thanks to Montaigne for the use of our theme song, My Life is Better With You. That's and for tra- everything, and for just everything, all of all of her incredible artistic contributions to back in WW two, Montaigne saved me. There was an army of tanks bearing down on me, and out of nowhere, Montaigne came, shredded on a guitar, and yeah. it sent out powerful sound waves that cut the tanks in two. But also, uh, they created peace, and um, we played soccer for a little bit. All right. Yeah, well, it was awesome. Um, um, there's new merch out on Tuesday. You can check that out at macroymerch.com. We've got a brand new pen of the month. Uh, it's Sawbones number two books based on a recent episode. I'll let you put all that together. Uh, and that benefits the National Black Women's Justice Institute. They research, elevate, and educate the public about innovative community-led solutions to address the criminalization of black women and girls. So a great cause. Um, and 20 rendezvous pens. We've got two pens, one prom style of us, and one of the three of us floating on a tandem bike. Ba- you know, basic stuff. They're available individually or as a pair. Those are uh, designed by Lucas Hespenheide, uh, and uh, that's at Moosely Based on Twitter. And we've got an I'm Not Ashamed of My Clown Husband sticker designed by <laughs> Jacob Bailey at jsbailey817 on Twitter, and that benefits the Huntington Children's Museum, which is creating child-centered spaces that promote exploration and a love for learning through play. Uh, I also, man, if you like gaming, I've been doing a lot of Fortnite recently on my Twitch page, twitch.tv slash the Travis McElroy. I've been having fun, and surprisingly, I'm not terrible at it. So come on over and check that out, uh, and check out our YouTube channel, where Griffin has been doing a uh, Legend of Zelda run. Speak on that, Griffin. Oh, that's interesting. Speak on that. I've been playing a randomized Link to the Past game as Guy Fieri, but also I die in a single hit. And it's been a, it's, I've been making slow but steady progress. I'm very proud of you for that. Justin, anything you want to promote? Um, nope. Nope. Okay. Empty Bowl? Nope. Okay. Empty Bowl is a meditative serial podcast Stop. that Justin no, does. No, we're promote done. It. End of show. Okay. It's a meditative podcast about serial. It's very relaxing. Okay. Griffin, bring us home, Yeah, it's baby. Yahoo was sent in by Raj. Thanks, Raj. It's from Yahoo Answers user Plippins, who asks, um, do, uh, this, uh, this one was sent in by Raj. It's asked by Plip- Plimpins, who asks... Um, who's, um, quack, 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 where to, how, Hmm. so far so good, how, How? that's one of the classic, that's That's one of the big ones, yeah, it's one of the main questions, why, let's do a why, why is it, hey guys, it's me Plimpins, why is it that, what is the? Well, he tried what, and that didn't seem to go. Why doesn't either. seem to get me there either? Is this all what Plimpins wrote? Yeah. Hey guys, it's me, Plimpins. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I don't actually think I'm gonna get there this time, guys. And okay. I don't know. Well, no, no, no. I don't know what that means. Like, is this, do we, do, does the show not do end? We, I mean, is the show continuing even after the, the file has stopped? Griffin, try, can, I'm just going to throw up, land before time. Is that anything? 
Hey guys, it's me, Plimpins. Do they make baby gas drops for big boys like me? Plimpins? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just hey guys, it's me, Plimpins. If I take a lot of baby medicine, does it count just as big boy medicine? Thanks. It's me, Plimpins. <laughs> I'm just I'm a Travis. I'm Griffin McElroy. This <laughs> is my brother, my brother, me, kiss your dad, squirrel the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.